The scarcity and rarity of gold and silver coins can be a really important set of determining factors as to what price you both buy and sell at. And mintage is the key indicator of that scarcity and rarity. So when you see a coin like these beautiful Rwanda nauticals with only a mintage of 100, you need to ask yourself, is that a blessing or is that a blessing in disguise? And actually, maybe even a liability. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver or gold. And we have got some very cool things made of gold. This is the latest in the Rwandan Nautical Ounce Gold series, the USS Constitution. It's a stunner. I love it. I love this series, and it's now hopefully complete because they're bloody expensive. But I have committed, and I am committed, or I should be committed. Let me know which one you think I am down in the comments. But what I want to talk about, rather than just all these beautiful coins, which we will look at and salivate over, is the fact that they all have a mintage of just 100 each. That's tiny. That is so, so small in the grand scheme of coins and coin releases, certainly in the one ounce gold range, maybe if you roll mint kilos with single digit mintage. But honestly, it can really be quite the hindrance to knowing what the right price to pay for these types of coins should be. So I want to examine that, not just at this extreme end of the spectrum with these beautiful, high, absolutely stunning quality uh, Rwandan gold coins, but also when you're looking to sell your own little bits of silver. Because I've seen it time and time again with people looking to sell even just simple Britannias or Eagles or whatever it might be, and because there are some dealers out there who have prices, in the UK anyway, of 35, 36, 39, 40, 45 pounds an ounce, some one ounce silver coins, they think that's the going rate. And of course, there is a disconnect between what a dealer is willing to ask for and sit on and not get sold for a very long time, down to what the kind of fair market rate would be of a coin, maybe the upper market rate of what you would have if you have something quite popular, down to its intrinsic silver lining and value. And I think it's a really interesting topic that's certainly got something for everybody. And I see it in action almost every day when I have people getting in touch to sell little bits of silver from their own stack with my sort of selling um, selling side business, so to speak, my Backyard Bullion Buyers Club. You know, how do you put a price? What price do you put on the 10 ounce Queen's Beast Lion, the 10 ounce Queen's Beast Dragon and Griffin? Uh, what price do you put on a mint error that you only know of maybe 30, 40 uh, errors known in existence? It's so difficult to know. Uh, it's so difficult to advise as the point of, um, point of call as the seller for me. So does it really truly hinder or is mintage the best thing that you can look for in a coin? Is it, is it this sort of medium ground? Is 100 too low, I guess is the question. So for these nautical ounces, which is where I'll start the discussion at, um, 100 for each of these when they were released back in, I think the first one was 2017. Yes, here we go. There's the first one. The coin world back in 2017 was actually very, very different to where it is now. I've seen this evolution over time. And I got started with precious metal stacking in late 2015. But I started my YouTube channel in 2016. And I remember seeing this coin being... Well, not this particular gold coin, but I saw this series being talked about, and it was beautiful. I love ships. I always have loved ships. I've got pictures of ships in my house. I've got pictures of ships in my childhood bedroom at my parents' house. There are, there's just something about them that's elegant. I'm not a sailor. I've never really done much sailing myself, but there's just something so elegant about them, and they kind of speak to the human condition of exploration, and um, just, I love them. So this series spoke to me. And at the time, there was this opportunity that I was given to buy the first in the series of gold. And I did it, thinking this was really incredible. With a mintage of 100, I was like, this is a guaranteed win. There's no way that this can't be sought after by other people. But of course, you know, trends come and go and series come and go. But this series kept coming out each year and was equally very popular. And the good thing about this is that the mintage stayed at 100 each year that they came out. Other Rwandan golds went up in mintages, but these stayed the same. And so because I love them so much and I wanted them, 
I bought them and I have now the full set. Whether, you know, that's a financially wise decision in the future, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, what I will say is that the first uh, three, here's the 19 as well, first three in the series are actually in profit in terms of just the raw spot price. So whilst you might argue, yes, if you bought an ounce of gold in 2017, um, it would have cost you £900 and you'd have £600 profit. But, you know, with these being £1,600 in raw gold value, they're already profitable compared with what I paid for them, which was about 1400 I think, at the time, something like that. So there's definitely two ways to look at it in terms of being a collector. You know, you can wait a long, long time to see how things go. Or, of course, if you are looking to cash out from the series, then how do you do that with such a low mintage coin? And the crux comes here, because there are not going to be any, or very few at least, if you can even find them, representative market value sales out there. Yes, there might be some people in this world that have collected this series or got the first couple in the series and then didn't want to continue it, and they might be selling them at some point, but I would imagine not. Most people who have this series, and I'd be surprised if there were quite a lot of people who had the full six, because this series is not a cheap series, and I'm not regretting my decisions by telling you it's not a cheap series. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people out there that when they've spent this much money on this series, they want to make sure that if they're exiting it, they're getting the best value that they possibly can. Now, that best value might not end up actually being profitable, certainly maybe on some of the recent coins with the increase in spot price and the retail price from dealers of these coins. There is definitely work to be done if I needed to cash out from this particular coin without telling you exactly what I paid for it. It was significantly more than the 1400 that I paid for the first one in the series. But essentially, they're the same. You know, we have an ounce of gold with a ship-themed pattern on them. So it's really difficult to know without all of these other representative sales out there. Now, in the initial run of these coins, I did see a few change hands because there was this almost, well, not really hype because there's only 100 coins out there, but there was definitely this following for them. There was this nod from certain parts of the community that said that these coins were going to be pretty pretty cool, pretty good to get, and potentially quite valuable in the future. And there were certainly a few people who sold some for profit, a couple of hundred pounds profit per coin. Now, the other thing here is that when I'm saying I bought the first couple at around 1400 and the spot value now is of course 1600, there's profit there, but even right now I can tell you that these shouldn't be priced at spot. They should be priced higher. So how do you work out what it should be? How do you attribute value to something that's not got necessarily a proven market rate behind it? And that, I think, can be very difficult for people when looking to price up things that they've got in their own collection. So if we move from that far end of the spectrum downwards, how do you know what to sell these coins for? You know, if you stick this up on eBay, you know, I've seen some of these stick on eBay for £500. They're not going to sell at that. But if you're just going to stick it on eBay and wait for two years for some poor sap who doesn't understand otherwise to buy it, that's morally grey in some areas that I would argue, but it's also not a horrible tactic, and it's ultimately what the dealers do. You know, they just have all of these coins sat in stock. I look at some of the biggest dealers out there in the UK in their pre-owned section. And there are things that in that pre-owned section that have been there for years, and sometimes longer. And um, eventually, eventually they disappear. Whether they've been sold or whether they've just been moved on from the dealer to someone else, you don't know. But that's the dealer's tactic. And if you've got the kind of cash flow behind you, you've got the... Um, you know, the ability to not need that cash for a long time, then you can just stick it up on a website, have it as that price. Eventually, somebody will stumble across it and somebody will buy it. Now, from my perspective, I'm not really too bothered about these. I'm going to hold them for a long time when we started this series. And I'm using the term we because Mrs. Backyard Bullion was as much as a part of the decision making of this series as I was. But the goal here is to have a collection. And I do genuinely feel that this, as a collection, represents something a little bit better than selling individually. And my reasoning here is the opposite side of the coin, so to speak. As a buyer, how do you know that the prices that you're seeing out there are a fair one, are a representative one? 
you know, there are reference numbers that can be easily Googled, and a lot of people fall foul of that because they will Google, you know, what price is a 10 ounce Queen's Beast line, and they'll see 500 on eBay and 490 on various dealers. But that's not really what prices are. Those are the optimistic wait for some poor sap prices, they're not the fair market rates. So it can be very difficult to know exactly what the right price as a buyer that you should be paying for these things. Now, I've always used the mantra of, if you've done your homework on something, and if you've really got a passion for it, and it's something that you think that you will enjoy and like, but at the same time you've looked at it from all angles, head and heart, and you're still happy to buy it, then the price that you're paying is a representative market value. There might very well be somebody else in this world that is willing to pay what you've just paid for something. And I don't think that's an unholy, unreasonable sort of angle to take when looking to assess value on things. There are plenty of examples of coins that are vastly more expensive than these, and that can include raw mint proof coins, for example. Um, in fact, look, here's, here's something for all you beautiful backyard bullion ramblers. I have literally just taken delivery of a proof coin from the raw mint right here, right now. I'm not going to show you the uh, the address label, but there it is. I've just opened it. Let's see what's in here. So attributing the right price to something is very difficult, but there are certainly more expensive decisions that one can make in this world compared with these coins, for example. But generally, the message here is because something has a tiny mintage doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread. You know, these Tudor Beasts here, perhaps maybe the wrong series to really give this prime example of. The Monarch series would have been a much better one to do an unboxing of, of just now. This one here has a mintage of 1250 in this presentation, 1256 in total. It's the Bull. It's, I think, the two ounce version because it's quite a heavy one. Here it is. See if you can spot any uh, raw mint quality issues. It looks pretty good from my angle here, although the capsule's a little bit um, grubby now. I've got my hands on it. But that's 1256, that's a good mintage, and it's always been easy for me to see what fair market values are for things like the um, Queen's Beast Proof coins or the Monarchs coins when they come out each time, and you see the flippers in force on eBay. So there's definitely something to be said about having something at a higher mintage, um, and I would always think, certainly going forward now, I think this series has taught me a lot. It's taught me that the beauty of gold doesn't have to be in the metal itself, of course, they're stunning coins. But it also has taught me that the mintage of things, whilst important, there's a balance to be had. 100 is exorbitantly low, and it's not something that's going to yield reference sales very often. And even when they do, is it something that's going to pique people's interest? If you get one of these coins actually selling, you know, properly selling, not just being listed on eBay for some arbitrary price. Is there going to be then someone else out there that wants to buy it? Because it won't have been seen for years. I bet a lot of you have forgotten about this series because it hasn't come out in 2022. We're in March, April 2023 and this has finally come out. I've been googling Rwandan nautical ounce for the good part of the last 18 months to try and wait for this to get it because my inner OCD just would not allow me not to complete the series. So yes, I think mintage is super important but when you get down to the lower end of the spectrum, it can be a bit of a hindrance to know what the best price is. But my last and parting message will be, again, if you've got something and you're selling it and you're happy with the money that you're getting back in, whether it's profit or whether it's breaking even or whether it's even making a loss, but you need that cash, don't live with regrets. I don't live with regrets. It's expensive coin set, not going to lie. Quite a lot of money locked up in this set but I love it, and I love what I've learned about it. And you can't win them all, but if you're sensible about things, sensible, sorry, you can probably tell I'm losing my voice, got a bit of man flu. If you're sensible about things, in the long run, I think even some of these very low mintage coins that aren't readily available will come good. That's my feeling. So... Let me know what you think about this series. It'd be great to hear from you, especially my Backyard Bullion Rambling Society members, who, if you're watching to this point, you are now in, and you are super cool. 
Thanks for putting up with the croaky voice. It's managed to hold out better than I expected. I thought I'd lose it completely. But no doubt the next video I film tomorrow will probably be worse. Thanks all. We'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more. <laughs>